the companies that you've worked for um, are so radically different from a place like Google, Avon, Liz Claiborne, Swatch, Calvin Klein, Mattel, Gap, Disney, and you were also an entrepreneur. And so Google seems like such an uh, unlikely place, um, not necessarily for someone like you, but for a company like Google <laughs> to have someone who's not a computer scientist or a tech geek nerd. Um, and so maybe you can, we can start by you telling us a little bit about how you navigated that career and how your experiences have kind of set you up for this role at Google. OK. Um, you know, I see the continuity behind all of that because I'm a builder, a builder of ideas, of teams, of product. My um, dad was a car designer, and as a kid, he, I think he wanted a son and he got a daughter, but he still took me to car shows, put me in front of the hubcaps when I was five years old, I was eye level with the hubcaps, and taught me what I now understand is how to get into that flow state and see things beyond what they appeared to be. Um, so I became a, a jeweler, I think, a metalsmith, because all those years of really paying attention to how those hubcaps were designed, put together, connected, and as he taught me what other things in the world could be connected in that way, um, I became a jewelry designer. But it was always around my curiosity of how things work. Um, I was also a psychology minor in school, so it was about how things work for people. Mm -hmm. um, and I just followed my intuition of what felt right when an opportunity would come up. It was like, hmm, I haven't designed that before. Or I haven't put my mind to that category. But it's always been consumer products. Um, and I've always been the one pushing the envelope in some of these more traditional companies. And now at Google, it feels like home because I'm with curious minds as well. That's the thread that ties you all together. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So now your role at Google is uh, you're responsible for hardware design? Yes, now that we, you know, last year we launched uh, the Pixel phone, Google Home, and Google is really going to continue to build its portfolio of hardware. Uh, so I am uh, responsible for creating this design language along with my team across all, and user experience across all of these categories. So it's an incredible opportunity. Wow. How would you describe Google's emerging hardware design language? I mean, with physical devices, um, it's, uh, the physicality kind of uh, emanates a sort of certain spirit um, or an energy, you know, like when you're deciding to buy something to put inside your home, like you're looking at that and that's in your own personal space and also for everyone to see. So it's a very deeply personal and very curated kind of uh, selection for the consumer in a way that I think is um, much more deliberate than like how we choose which software apps to use on our phones. So how do you think through this? Well, first of all, today I think Product design is really the entire experience. Mm -hmm. um, and the software, the hardware, they just have to dance with each other. And it's the emotional appeal of um, both what are the smarts inside and what is this going to do for my life, as well as how does it fit into my life. So a lot of what we're looking at now that it's clear electronics is here to stay, um, the question is how does it fit into our life and our environment versus standing out? I think, you know, in the beginning it was the columns of black plastic that you would see all over, and now I think it requires a different lens um, as we integrate it into our life. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and are there certain uh, psychological traits or properties or ideals that are being manifested in the design? Well, I think myself and my team, I mean, we're interested in technology that amplifies our humanity, doesn't take it doesn't take us out of it. So um, there are you know, principles of being um, you know, human and uh, simple um, that we embody in everything that we do. 